Hi everyone, uh, Solution Architect here. In uh, today's video, we'll talk about uh, security using ASP.NET Core and we'll talk about auth authentication on how to authenticate um, and also how to use the code generator in ASP.NET in .NET, uh, to be able to generate your register screen, your login screen, and then I'll also show you a little bit about authorization. So I'll first take you through a few slides. And then after that, I'll take you through the code to show you exactly how the code is structured. Now, obviously, no, you're not going to create the code from scratch. All right. So I'm going to show you the final code because I've also modified a few pages there. And I've added a few pages for showing you how to authorize a specific role for a user. Uh, I use SQLite in this example. And I've also, obviously, I used ASP.NET Web App. Uh, I didn't use the MVC controller, which is probably the best, uh, better way of doing it. Uh, but I've used the Web App. and But you can see how we can um, take a certain pages and then um, according to your role as an admin role and how, how are we going to uh, deny access for a normal user and also show you how I've, I've specified in the database uh, to uh, for a specific user. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you haven't done that yet and uh, share this video uh, for anybody because this is the way that you should be doing uh, auth uh, authentication and authorization because the password is hashed and it, it's stored in the database as a hash password. Um, I will in the future bring out videos for OAuth, OAuth, but this one is not using OAuth, it's using the ASP.NET uh, functions and roles. And it creates all of these things for you automatically. I'll also leave a few links in the description of this video. So if you want to know how to do it, um, there's instructions on the Microsoft website, how to actually go in through and, and create this page. I'll also leave the link of my GitHub uh, link of the code itself. You can go download it and play around with it and, and make it your own. It doesn't matter. Um, obviously, I've, I've, I've denied uh, any uh, push into to my repos on GitHub, but you can also you can download the code and play around with it on your local machine. So I'm going to jump into this. This is also part of my, my course on Udemy that I'm going to still put out, um, hopefully in the next week or so. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we'll create an example application that will look uh, similar to to this. So it will be very a simple application, uh, just to show you how how to do this. Um, I will I will leave the steps. We cannot go through the whole thing in inside a video creating the whole application. But what I will do, I will go through and show you the actual code and give you a link to to the to the code that's on GitHub, okay? In in this video, you will have a, uh, a link that you can uh, go into and actually go download this code and run it for yourself. Remember, this runs on ASP.NET Core version 8, okay, .NET 8. So we will build a simple application uh, to allow the users to register as a user, and then we'll create a, a login screen uh, by using ASP.NET code generator. So there's a, a code generator identity that you can use that will automatically create these register and login for you inside the web application. We're not using MVC for this. Um, I'm just using code behind page, but I will show you exactly how it looks. So this is the first page when you land up in the application. This is what you will see. Then to register a user, uh, you'll use a register. Um, and, and anybody can then register here. And re when you register, you can click on the login button and you'll be asked to, to enter your email address and password. And then you will be registered. And then thereafter, if you are, what I did is I manually went and created a, a role for myself. I created two users and I will show you in the, in a demo of the code on, on how the code is structured. So we'll go through all the code and how the code is structured. 
remember, uh, and I'll show you the steps also, and I'll, I will leave this, all the steps in the description as well, and also give you a link to Microsoft, uh, how they, they do it there in Microsoft that might change in a year or two from now. So uh, things might be a little different, and that's why I'm gonna send you the link, and, and then you can look on the Microsoft site what is the latest uh, way of, of creating these pages. So the, when you are a, I created my, um, my business uh, username and email address um, uh, as an admin. So when I log in with this email address, I, I will be able to see the admin dashboard. All right. And when you click there, I will, I will show you in the demo. When we click there, it will open up the ad, admin dashboard. I also created another user um, with my solution architect email address. As you um, log in as a normal user, you'll be able to, you, you'll see a normal user won't be able to see the admin dashboard. And I will show you in the code. So that is authorization. So log in and log out is authentication to authenticate that the user are, are valid and that you can log in. But the admin user is the authorization rules. And how do we apply that into the code? So this is the instructions and just to start the project. Obviously, um, I've done uh, some changes in, in the project to be able to add the authorization site. So this is basically creating the full identity site, which uh, will create you a register uh, button and it will create you a login button and will create all the functions uh, behind that um, uh, code as well. Um, so, so you start with, obviously I didn't use MVC for this, you can see the differences, .NET, new web app, uh, minus, minus sign, uh, auth, and individual. So this is individual auth uh, authentication, basically. So it will, it will automatically create the authentication model for a web application in .NET Core. And, and then what I did do is install the .NET EF um, in a global environment, uh, so you don't have to do it do it every time uh, and and also the .NET ASP code generator that will automatically um, and you'll see in the bottom here we'll get to that uh, that needs needs to be installed so that you can run the code generator for the login the logout and the register uh, screens and also you know to confirm your 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 account so um, and and this is the this is the scripts. I will leave this uh, steps uh, in the description, but I will also leave a link to Microsoft website where they actually take you through step by step on how to create this. Obviously, we're not going to do the step by step thing within this uh, video. We're just going to show you the code on how it looks like. So. Um, we had to install all these packages, um, package like the identity UI package, the SQL, because we use SQLite for us. We use the uh, .NET Entity Framework core tools, and we also needed uh, the diagnostics. Uh, we also needed just the um, Entity Framework core and the code generation design. And then we can run this um, command that will automatically create uh, the uh, the screen as well as the backend code for a register, a login, logout, register confirmation using SQLite. So that will automatically create the models for you on how it needs to look like in the model. Uh, you know, I'll show you the database, and I also installed and I'll show you where I inst what I installed to actually edit um, tables as well in SQLite. And then uh, when you run .NET EF migration at initial create, that will also obviously create all the, the migration um, classes for you for, for insert the, cr the CRUD as, as, uh, as I mentioned before. And this will, the last command will actually create the database for you. So now we'll jump into the code and I will show you how that uh, looks like. So we're inside a VS Code, and what I will do is I will take you through all the different uh, areas in here, the, the program and the code uh, that I've added, and also show you which ones were added automatically. 
and where I made changes for the authorization side. So um, first of all, before we go into that level, I want to show you that, that I've added a for SQLite uh, to be able to view uh, SQLite a bit, bit better, but also to edit SQLite. Uh, I added a editor called SQLite 3 uh, editor by, if you click on it, by, J, by YY0931. You can see there's uh, more than 200,000 downloads for it. And I like it. I, I know there's a few others there that you can try out. Uh, what's nice about this, you can run a SQL uh, queries on it. And you can make changes and you can add um, add uh, columns and rows and whatever rows into into it. Uh, and I'll show you how I've done it as well because I had to do it for the roles part of these uh, this authentication. All right, so you can add uh, you can add this. Um, it's it's a good advice to if you have SQLite Viewer. To delete uh, to uninstall your SQLite viewer because this is the one that I used to use just to view the data but the SQL editor is actually much better and easier and nicer to work with right so let's go back to the code so when you run that uh, code generator what it does is for the register the login screen uh, everything gets created under this area identity pages uh, folders and inside there, you've got partial folders. Don't don't stress too much about that. There's no changes you have to do there. And then they create uh, the accounts folder. And inside this accounts folder, there's a login page. Okay. Um, and it creates all of this code for you automatically, which is quite nice. It creates also the code behind page. I didn't use MVC. Uh, so this normally works the way it works. It uh, it works on a an event called a on get a sync event when it gets, and it also as a post as well. So when if you use the controller MVC controller, obviously all the code behind page will be in the controller side. But this is just a different way of creating a web app. I wouldn't say this is ideal. MVC is probably the best way of doing it. When you click the button, say on post, it will then, uh, in the login, it will log you in. It will also allow the, uh, the user just to, yeah, so it's just a straightforward login and you don't have to do any changes there. The logout is exactly the same. It's just uh, you have been successfully logged out and there's also code behind page. You've got nothing to do there as well. Register is when you register a user. Uh, the only change that I did make, nothing on the HTML side, but on the code behind page, the only thing that I added here uh, is, is when you register a user, it will normally, it will register, and this is the code that I've added, is to register the user role as well. Um, I'll show you the database in a moment, okay, um, how it looks like. So this is the code I've added just to make sure that this user that's added as as a as a user. I created myself as an admin user. I created the user, but I changed it obviously then to an admin user and I'll show you how that looks in the database. So when 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 you uh, finish uh, register, it also creates a register control a confirmation HTML page where what you have to do there is you have to click on the button to say, it doesn't send you an email. Obviously that, that part hasn't been coded. But this is also automatically created for you. Uh, this is just to confirm that you um, are happy with the email address. So it, uh, when you click that button, it will run this code. And it will just confirm in the database that you have now confirmed as a registered user. And you can use this code for any website, basically, uh, that you created or that you uh, create. Obviously, when you run uh, migration, it will create that EF migration will create the uh, migration rules for you uh, for your models. Um, there's nothing in data here. I must actually delete that. And in the pages, uh, the obviously your shared page, your um, layout page. The only thing that I added here is this part, this link here. And and you'll see when I run this application how it how it uh, operates. 
so if you are admin as a user, it will display uh, this link for you so that you can go to the dashboard. So I also created a dashboard for admin. Nothing really um, rocket science. It's, it's a simple dashboard that will also validate that you are a user uh, of admin. You are in the role of admin. Uh, and then when, when, when you are, you will be able to, this is just almost like double security. Uh, so if you are in, in the admin role as a user, it will show you this code. Uh, this is just really simple code. If you look at the CS file, the C shop code, uh, I commented that out. It, it really just, it only displays a few variables just, just to show you that uh, the difference between an admin role and not an admin role and how you how you manage that. So in, in the code, obviously, uh, there's also a thing that you need to put on, on the top of, of this um, this class here is called authorize roles equals the admin. Okay, so when it's admin, then you'll see this page. That's actually now triple security because now even if you can access the page, if you can go to the page itself, uh, it will disallow you to view that page. It's, so it's a good practice to put in on top of your code uh, this authorized rule. It will restrict the access to the page. And also, when you're in the page, also make sure that you do a check here. And this add if uh, is admin check will make sure that you are admin to be able to view this. So that is that is good security. Um, and then obviously there um, in in the it's nothing in index, nothing in here that I actually changed. Um, and the only thing that I did change obviously was in the program uh, file startup. Okay, so. When the program starts up, and um, obviously I could have put this into a main method, but this will just run and it will add the database connection. Um, while it adds the database connection, it will also add uh, the identity and also the roles. Um, because if you don't add this line, uh, you won't be able to then uh, see what the role is that the user belongs to. So then, then um, I added all these options. Um, uh, the uh, allowed user characters, this will automatically say, okay, uh, when you create a username, you're only allowed to use these characters when you create a username. Okay. Um, and then nothing else really uh, stands out here that was most, most of these things were automatically added. Uh, the only thing that I did add here is the policy uh, for the admin role itself. So when you are an admin, it must add the policy in here. Otherwise, you won't be able to see uh, see anything. Your your admin roles won't be working when you try to access the dashboard. All right, so that is the only uh, code that I added there. The, the rest were added automatically for me when I created the application. All right, let's look at the database itself. Right, so the database has got a few tables, and um, if you look at okay, that it looks a little different than the other uh, ways of doing it. But if you click down here, you can actually see it created all these tables uh, ASP net uh, um, role claims. Obviously, this one is not populated, nothing in here. Uh, there's the ASP.NET roles, so I've got a user role and I've got a admin role. Not sure why I've got two user roles here. Um, I think I created this one manually, and this was one was created automatically by uh, by the user uh, by by the application. But it doesn't matter. It will only look for for user, and and, and if you are a user, you would be able to. Uh, you're not going to be able to see the admin dashboard. Um, when you go to, there's also nothing in user claims. Um, and logins, nothing in there, but there will be definitely inside here. You'll see that the one that I created manually, it doesn't have a quit. It's only have two there. Uh, so this number two uh, is basically the role that is linked to the user. And if I move it over to, you can see that user uh, is strolls at graysoft.clz. That's the user. You can also see that the password 
in there, and I'll go to the user um, table now. You see, I've got two users. Okay, uh, the user uh, passwords um, is encrypted. Okay, so if you look at this, it's hash encrypted. So you can't see what my password is. This is obviously not something that I've typed in. Uh, you don't want to have a clear password stored in a database. And if you are implementing it like this, then you will be able uh, to uh, it also double security because then when someone put in the password, the code will automatically hash the password. Um, and when you read the password, the code will, will uh, when you type in the uh, username and password in the login screen, uh, it will automatically hash that password and will match the password by using the hashing algorithm. Now, all of that happens, obviously, within your login screen. So if we go into the login screen in the back end there, uh, that password sign a sync. So if you go in there, you know, obviously not be able to go into, into, that, into that level. It will automatically do that um, comparison for you. And then it will it will come back to say what is the result uh, if that password. So inside here, there's methods inside here uh, that uses the library, the you know the uh, the libraries that's been referenced up up here. Let me go go to that identity and authentication libraries will automatically then use be used to do that hashing algorithm for you, and so you don't have to take care of it. So it's really important to know that you don't want to save any clear password in any database because it's easy to hack a database. And when you are hacking the database and you go into the database itself, you can read this, but you can't log in with this uh, this password because this is a hashing algorithm. Uh, so so you, your password might be admin123 or whatever it is, uh, but it will automatically hash it into this. So it's really important from any perspective that you have implemented security on many ways. So, so you understand the, the authentication is just the login to authenticate the user. And the authorization is to see, okay, can I see this dashboard? Yes or no. And obviously the way that we've implemented is inside this, this, if this, if this user that is logged in, it will be able to see this, um, this dashboard, All right? I'm going to start up the application and show you how that works. So let's go into, yeah, we're going to .NET run. Just ignore the warning. I'm just going to uh, click on this and I'll bring the application onto the screen. I'll just make it a little bit smaller. We don't need it that long. So when you register, and I'm not going to register another user, but if you click on register, you can put an email address, uh, a password, and you need to confirm your password. And it will check basically automatically if the password matches. And when you register, all of that is encrypted uh, throughout the whole process uh, to the backend. And when you click on login, I'm gonna I'm gonna just use uh, my my Charles of Graysoft one at Graysoft.cl.za. Um, and I'm going to just uh, do a login. This user is admin. Um, so if I log in, you'll be able to see the admin dashboard. Okay, so then I can click on admin dashboard and I can see whatever is inside here. So welcome your admin. When I log out and I log in as um, the solution architect and I log in as that, you can see there's no dashboard inside here. If I do, for example, just put in your dashboard. You can do that in in ASP.NET Core, but then you'll see that access is denied. So that's the double. If you know what the endpoint is uh, of this, it will just go to uh, denied because the way that we've we've basically put in the code uh, on that dashboard, both from a, a UI perspective and a backend perspective from the C# -sharp code that will uh, deny access to an admin admin dashboard. Right, so that is, in a nutshell, how the application work. Um, what you can do is, and I'm going to just jump over to, I'm gonna close this, 
and I'm going to show you the code itself is checked in here and I will leave obviously this in the description uh, and you can download this code as well. Uh, you'll be able to uh, download this code and run it locally and play around with this code. This is that full solution that I just showed you. Also, I'm just going to step into the Microsoft website. They call it scaffolding uh, identity in ASP.NET Core projects. I will also leave the link in the description. Uh, because obviously from six months or a year from now, things might have changed a little bit. So you can go re research to make sure that you still understand how to implement it. Now, if you use a VS Code, normally what I do is I use the CLI commands and not v Visual Studio because this is Visual Studio, the community edition or the professional edition or even the enterprise edition. But we're not using that. We use VS Code and I use everything manually. Now in this uh, in this example, um, they use SQL Server. I used SQLite for my, uh, for my database. And you can just go through this code, run it yourself, play around with it. And obviously this is, um, this will be updated. Um, my video might not be updated by the time that Microsoft update the way that they've done it. So they, so this one is still an older version on I ran uh, .NET 7, or not 8, sorry. And um, obviously mine, mine works still the same way as what they've instructed, uh, how, how you actually create this ASP.NET uh, core application. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this and then uh, I'll see you in the next one.